Hi there, and welcome back to the second video lecture on flexure of the lithosphere for the geodynamics course. In this lecture, we're going to look at balancing forces and torques, and we actually have three goals in this lecture. First is a relatively simple one, and that is to define what a torque is, since it might not be a familiar term for many of you. Our second goal is to calculate the balance of forces and torques that are acting on a, an elastic plate. And then lastly, we're going to relate the forces and torques that are acting on the plate to a deflection of the plate. So how far it's going to be bent as a result of those forces and or torques. So what is a torque? Well, a torque is simply a twist that's applied to an object, and maybe just by that definition alone, it's not entirely clear, but it's similar to a force. And uh, in this case, though, it's specific to rotation of an object about an axis. So if you've ever used a wrench or anything like that, even a screwdriver, the wrench is a good example of exerting a torque when you pull on the wrench. If you ever have to take the lug nuts off your uh, wheel of your car or something like that, um, you have to exert a fairly significant torque to get those lug nuts loose. In the case of our perfect elastic material, again here's the ruler. If I was to apply a torque at the end of the ruler, it would be twisting the ruler, and by twisting on the end of it, it causes the ruler to bend. Now it's difficult to apply a torque in this case because I have to pinch the ruler quite um, hard with my hand, but I can still, just by twisting my wrist, bend the ruler and exert uh, enough torque here to cause a deflection of the ruler. The term itself is used um, interchangeably with moment or moment of force. So you may see some cases where in some of the slides we'll refer to a bending moment or things like that. But again, that's simply another word for torque. Mathematically, uh, the definition is sort of simple, and that is that the torque tau, the Greek letter tau here, is the cross product of a force F and a displacement vector R. And uh, you don't need to worry right now about what the cross product means, if that's unfamiliar, um, but it's simply a vector mathematical um, operation, and that's how you calculate the torque. So if we return now to our picture of flexure of an elastic plate from the previous video lecture, you can see here the general image of what we're working with. And I just want to remind you of a few things about this elastic plate. First off, it has a length L that's indicated here along the top. It's pinned at either end with the dots there pinning it to Y equals zero. And it's being acted upon a, by a line load VA that runs the full length of the elastic plate that would go in and out of the screen and it's positioned at the center um, with respect to the two pinned points along the x-axis. Now this plate has a thickness h that's indicated here between these two arrows and as noted over on the right side here h is much much smaller than l and as well the deflection that's indicated here by the letter w with the arrow here shows the displacement or deflection of the elastic plate from the y equals zero position to the middle of the plate here. And the amount of deflection, again, is going to be much, much smaller than the length of the plate. So in other words, the plate's much longer than it is thick, and its deflection is relatively small compared to its length. Okay, so we have it, um, that it has an infinite width along the z-axis as well, so that would be going in and out of the screen in this case. Now, in order to calculate the amount of deflection or the, the magnitude of deflection along any point in the plate, we have to balance the forces and torques that are acting on the plate, so all of the um, external forces that would cause the plate to bend. So we can start by looking at the vertical force balance, the balance of all the vertical forces along this plate, and we'll look at this in the context of some tiny piece of the plate along the x-axis. So you can see here, 
at position x is one end of this little piece, and at the other end we would be at the position x plus dx, some tiny amount, uh, an infinitesimal distance away along the x-axis. Here you can see there are basically two different vertical forces that are acting on the plate. The first, indicated by the letter Q, is a uh, downward load, so this would be something pushing along the top of the plate, and it could vary as a function of where you are along the x-axis, so these different vectors have different lengths, indicating that Q of x may vary as a function of x along that axis. The other uh, force that we have to consider are the shear forces that are acting in the vertical direction here, indicated by the letters uh, V, and so you can see at one end V is upward, and at the other end at the V plus dV we have a downward shear force, and so that pair of forces would be exerting, uh, or would be the result of shearing within this plate. So what we can say then if we want to balance the vertical forces is that Q of X times dx, so q of x along this little piece between x and dx, plus dv, the change in the shear force, is equal to zero. So that's the vertical force balance from x to x plus dx. Now mathematically you can rearrange this thing to basically say dv dx, uh, the change in shear force along the x-axis is simply equal to negative q, and again, Q is a downward load, V is the net shear force. And both of these values would be per unit length along the Z direction, so in and out of the plane of the screen. Now to look at the torques, uh, we can do something similar, but we have to consider in this case that there are three torques that are acting on the plate in this case. And so you can see that the torque balance is actually indicated down here. It's dm minus p dw equals v times dx. Now, what does that mean? Well, we have to first look at the different torques that are acting on this little piece of the plate in order to start thinking about that. Down here, we can see that dm is the net counterclockwise torque on the element as a result of fiber stresses, and we'll talk a little bit about what fiber stresses are in one of the upcoming slides, but this has to do with the rigidity or the strength of the bending of this plate, and so you can see there's a torque indicated by the curved arrows here of m at m plus dm, and at the other end it's simply m. Um, so there is a counterclockwise um, rotation or torque as a result of that. Vdx, you'll remember, is the shear force, and as you can see here, because we have one vector pointing up and one vector pointing down, we would have a clockwise uh, torque on this little piece as a result of those two shear forces, V and V plus dV. The third torque here is uh, the result of horizontal force uh, that's indicated by the letter P, and so you can see here P on either side, and that would be if you had an axial load or a load that's going along the length of the plate. So you could think about this kind of like uh, if I took my ruler here and I just squeezed from the two sides, that axial load actually, actually results in a torque. Now why does it result in a torque? Well the reason for that is that this load is perpendicular to these vertical planes on the side of the uh, deflected plate, but you can see that the position at the center of the plate P, of where P is acting here, is higher up than the position of where P is acting down there. So when you have that kind of situation, if you're pushing like this, it's going to cause a rotation. So that's another counterclockwise torque. Okay, so we have in this case two counterclockwise torques and one clockwise, and that's basically our balance shown down here just in rearranged terms as dm dx equals v plus p dw dx, where again, just remember that w is the, uh, the deflection. You can see it here. That's the deflection of the beam. You can see that this is W plus DW here, and that small distance, the difference between W and W plus DW is simply DW, and that's why this P is multiplied by the change in deflection along the length DX. 
So hopefully that makes sense. If not, you may want to go back and uh, just follow through this slide one more time. Now we can do a little bit of math here and the idea is that just doing a small amount of rearranging things we can actually eliminate the shear force from our vertical force uh, or from our torque and force balance. And so if we take the different you know, differential operator, if we do the derivative along the, uh, with respect to x on both sides of our um, torque balance, we had over here previously dm dx equals v plus p dw dx, and we just take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. You can see then you're going to end up with a second derivative of m with respect to x. We had dm dx here, and if you take the dx, d over dx times dm dx, you get the second derivative, plus dv dx, now that's simply the derivative of v with respect to x, plus p times the second derivative of the deflection. The trick here is that in our force balance before, we had this term where dv dx equals minus q. And so that's what allows us to put this line load or this uh, distributed uh, load along the top of the beam, this q of x. We can plug that in here now in place of dv dx because we've taken that derivative. And so the shear force then has been eliminated from the equation, so now we have things in terms of m, q, p, and w. And so remember this is the torque that results from bending of the plate. Q is our distributed load along the length of the plate. P is the axial load, and then since the axial load is applied and the position um, of W at one end and W plus DW is different, then that results in a torque. So those are our different terms. And finally, um, if we can find a relationship between the bending moment and the deflection, then we can basically calculate or come up with a differential equation for the deflection. And that's kind of what we're after is to be able to, to calculate what the deflection is for a given set of forces or torques. So we have our equation from the previous slide. This is simply the second derivative of m with respect to x minus q plus p times the second derivative of w, the deflection, with respect to x. Now there is a sort of lengthy derivation about this in the Turcotte and Schubert geodynamics textbook. You're welcome to take a look at that if you'd like, but uh, we'll skip past that for right now and just make note of a couple things. First, um, there's a relationship between the bending moment m, so that's the torque exerted at either end of this little beam or uh, elastic plate section, and the plate curvature. And um, we're not going to worry about the details about that for the moment, except for these longitudinal stresses, sigma xx, are going to be positive for y values and negative for uh, negative y values. So what are these longitudinal stresses? What do they come from? Well, if you took the example of bending a ruler, it's not exactly that clear, but when you bend this ruler, as you can see in the image that's shown here, it results in compression above the middle of the thickness of the ruler, or in this case some elastic plate, and extension or relative extension along the base of the plate, and then there's a line that goes right through the middle here that would be at y equals equal or y equals zero in this case, and along that line there is no strain. So above it you can see that there's compression, and beneath it you can see that there's extension, and so that's how we get positive um, positive stress values up here. And you can see in this case that if this is y equals zero in the middle of the little piece of the plate, then up above it along the y-axis would be positive y-values, and you can see then there's positive um, stresses, positive longitudinal stresses, and then at negative y-values there are negative longitudinal stresses. So just make note of that. The bending moment m um, can be shown to be related to the curvature with this relationship, so m is simply equal to minus d times the second derivative of the displacement or deflection with respect to x. And this d 
is the thing that's derived in the Turcotte and Schubert textbook. It's something that's called the flexural rigidity or the bending stiffness of the plate. And it's basically a property of the plate. And so you can see in this case, E, which you'll remember from our previous set of lectures is Young's modulus. H is going to be the thickness of the plate. Um, and then down here you have the nu, the Poisson's ratio, again, brought up in the previous lecture. So you can see we have two elastic properties here that are part of this flexural rigidity and then the thickness cubed. So pay attention to that. You can see if the thickness is cubed, as you make this plate thicker, its rigidity is going to go up very quickly. So our general equation for plate deflection involves basically putting these two things together. We've gone through and we've calculated our force and torque balance and we came away with this equation where we had the second derivative of our bending moments uh, with respect to x being equal to the line load, or that line load, sorry, the uh, load along the length of the plate plus the axial load or the longitudinal load um, that's acting along the at either end of the the plate times the second derivative of the deflection and then we also had this relationship here where we said m was equal to the flexural rigidity times the second derivative of the um, displacement so obviously what you can see the natural thing to do here is that we've got an m Let's plug this M in, and if you do that, then you come out with this relationship after a minor um, rearrangement of terms, and you have then the flexural rigidity D times the fourth derivative of the deflection with respect to X being equal to Q of X, which is that load along the length of the elastic plate, minus P times the second derivative of the deflection. That's our general equation, and that will basically be the, the basis for what we do in the following lecture sets. We'll just now apply different restrictions to what's happening at the ends of the plate or within the plate, and then look at how the plate bends for different scenarios. So a little bit of uh, math in this lecture set, and... Um, not necessarily the most exciting thing, but we've set ourselves up now at this point to be in a position to now play with this equation for the deflection of an elastic plate for different loads and torques. And that will allow us to look at our um, sort of interesting geological examples now. So as always, it's time for the quiz. Go ahead and see what you've learned in this lecture, and then we can continue on with the next one.